Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part three of the show. Hopefully with no technical difficulties, even if I am technically difficult to get along with. Um, you guys walk out of the throne room and um, obviously, like I said, uh, maybe happy to be out of there, maybe sad that it's over. Um, I'm sure questions as as well as confusion or whatever the case may be. You come walking out because the you said your goodbyes, toss about the wine and then as you come out of the throne room those same two guards shut the doors behind you and they uh clamor shut click you stand in the hallway where you met before in awkward silence i have a space we can go and review this in private um uh, sure um i mean i have a place here as well but uh I imagine honest. you've been cooped up in this castle for quite some time. Maybe yes. it would be good to stretch your legs. Yes. A short walk would do. Does that suit you? With all due respect, I have a carriage. And this is a very, very expensive skirt. You may accompany me in the carriage. To, to your abode or mine. But walking, I would rather change before walking. Fair enough. That's an excellent point, yeah. Well, why don't we take the carriage to your abode, you can change, and then we can walk to mine. It's likely to be a little bit less monitored. Is mine monitored, Scott? Um, you, you don't, I mean, you're, uh, well, I'll leave it up. Give me a second. You're <laughs> flawless. So very likely no. So, so he just might not understand the statue of your, the stature of your station. Sure. I, I assure you that my lodgings will be quite suitable, but if you're more comfortable in your surroundings, that's fine. I guarantee you, though, that a military apartment will be much more surveilled than my accommodations. But surveilled for what? Anything at all. Hmm. More what I mean is a military operation operating out of a military apartment is not odd. People would pay it no mind. But if you would like your abode, I'm fine with that as well. They're for changing at either rate. Fair enough. You guys walk out of the castle. You probably actually had that as um, you were walking towards yeah. the entrance anyways, but perhaps maybe a little bit of a slower pace. Slower than you generally walk, Oscar, because your armor's heavy and inhibiting, but despite that fact, holy hell, his legs are short. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is very difficult to walk this slow. Uh, Chris Ellen would offer you a piggyback ride. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I'm actually that curious. Is highly... Actually, okay. No. Um... <laughs> He's like, where do I hold on? No, so um, I'm you pretty guys... sure I have a baby papoose somewhere. <laughs> well, Some of my clients are now. into different things, you know? <laughs> so um, uh, actually, the mechanics of this game are very different than d and I'm genuinely curious because of how armor inhibits and so on and so forth, what mm -hmm. your character's speeds actually are. It My... doesn't say, I don't think. First you first page of your character sheet. So for you, yeah. Doxy, your speed is 12. Oh. Mine is okay, also okay. 12. Perfect. And you, sir? And... <laughs> okay, so just you know, base oh, speed for a human is ten. So, yep. um, but you guys were able to increase from there. I think his base speed was eight, and he increased from there. So you were actually um, kind of like a busybody little. You probably walked the way I do. One of the I have to walk around humans all the damn time now. Exactly. <laughs> so you, you walk at the pace of an average human, which makes sense because you usually aren't around particularly strong or dexterous people, right? You're generally around a bunch of nerds with books. Um, but but I, again, I imagine your character has quite the uh, quite the stride for a gnome. Um, so I will say that Chris Ellen, for a human, um, she's a hedonist. Uh, so if she's in a beautiful place, she's going to want to linger anyway. Mm. Um, she's also going to be eager to please her new comrades. So she will match the slowest pace. Uh, will annoy Oscar to no end, but, but he will not show it. But remember, speed technically refers to more out of 
out of yeah. combat, sorry, in combat um, uh, kind of maneuvering and whatnot. Uh, but it was just nice to see mm-hmm. kind of like how this game handles that. Like, there's not much of a difference in speed between the two races. Whereas, like, say you look at 3.0, no one's moving at 20 versus 30. That's two thirds that, like, that's a huge drop off. It's a tiny drop off for you guys, right? So it's not so bad. Oscar does move with purpose, though. Like a, like a lot of purpose. He's one of those people yeah. that like you don't want to be walking in front of him when he's walking down the street. Like, again, I am I'm literally one. I, like I step yeah. around people awkwardly. I I'm not like it's one of those things where if you ever see me walking, I get made fun of by my family and friends all the time mm. because I'm obnoxious. I'm just like, why the fuck are you in my way? I have a place to be. I you hate... left me in the dust in LA a lot of times. Yeah. Oh my god, I had to walk so slow to be with you. I was like, oh I was my walking god. very fast. <gasps> for me too. I just want to know. When we walked to Pho, which you guys can hate on me for as long as you want about how long it took, I had to go so fucking slow with all of you. I would no, have been there so quickly. Listen, and, listen. And left would, and been back at the hotel right by the time listen, you guys got there. You scrawny giant. I would have been right there with you, but unfortunately we had some... Um, I have little legs. Some hedonistic. Actually, you're delightful company, though, and that's all that matters. <laughs> I, I honestly, I was sitting there like, smell the fucking roses, assholes. <laughs> I was like, is it? Is it is my first, it's like smell in L.A. It smells like shit. I was like, <laughs> uh, I, I was like, do I? Do, is it inappropriate for me to just buy one of these motor scooters for Doxy to stand on? <laughs> so she, mm, I'm with you guys now. <laughs> So the future reference. Good, what was that? <laughs> future reference. Scott needs to ha- be the runner of a rig uh, rickshaw for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, Doxy. We'll, we'll just sit in the back and he can run us. <laughs> it's That's literally. Reasonable. It's the point where like I love um, I, my daughter is kind of spoiled with being carried because. I'm like, you walk too slow. <laughs> so I just pick her up and go. <laughs> like, like, let's go. Daddy can carry you. You weigh like a fifth or a eighth or whatever I do. Let's go. <laughs> Um, so anyways. I can fit quite comfortably in a shopping cart. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Um, so anyways, so we, uh, um, do you expect any less from me, by the way? <laughs> not, not <easily>. So, so <laughs> you, um, you guys, uh, uh, make your way to, down to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the carriage. I imagine once again there's a bit of a, a bit of a silence, but not again not awkward, not even for Laszlo, as everybody's being very introverted for the moment, thinking about what it was that just transpired. Right, um, uh, Laszlo, I imagine, has the most to think about. You've just not only you, you've not only been given the grace to leave the capital for the first time since you threw yourself on your knees before it. Mm-hmm. You've been given a task of great import to the throne of the same importance as a master Venator and a muse. Like, that's a huge, like, station jump for from where you were to where you are now. So imagine each of your characters are a little introverted as you make your way down into the carriage and maybe a small amount of small talk of the carriage's quality. Wow, this is, in fact, a really smooth ride. Actually, Laszlo... <laughs> At Lazlo would, um, when we got into the cart, um, Lazlo would look at Oscar and he says, I assume, Master Minotaur. Minotaur. Minotaur, yes. Um, I assume that your, uh, your task is me. I haven't been given my task yet. The task will come from the mirror. So. Interesting. As far A as dangerous I'm concerned, one. Are you? Hmm. Nah, no, no, not at all. Uh, and he'll pull down his shirt, showing um, a tattoo of a peacekeeper um, squadron on it. Um, this is a lore yeah. check. Arcane. It's arcane, arcane, lore? Uh, arcane lore or history. Uh, te- no, 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 technically arcane. Sorry, you already rolled. It's too late. I did. Uh, and so I'll allow it to stay. Because technically it's a good freaking lore. roll. Yeah, I'll that was stay. an arcane lore. So yeah. Don't you think both of us would... Uh, no, Automatic, like, nope, not at all. This is Peacekeepers are arcane yeah. congress. Right? Yeah, this, this is, is arcane this, congress. Part of the reason why I think like Oscar would know in the first place is because this is what he studies is yeah. these people Ex- specifically. Exactly. So. Yeah, no, exactly. That makes sense for you. And again, uh, this is one of those things, Jeez. Doxy, just, just because obviously you're, you're questioning um, uh, whether you guys are automatically know. Um, the peacekeepers of the Arcane Congress are not openly known. There are several branches of the Congress that are people outside secret. of it know about. And then there are several that are not quite secret, but also not flaunted, right? Okay. So um, anyways, 
Um, and you've never been to Eustace. Um, so looking at your results. Right, but here, I've so... had a gnome or two. Okay. All right. Out <laughs> 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 of time. So um, they stack up like <laughs> I, So I'm, it's I have... really easy to make Josh blush, and I aim <laughs> to do it as many times as possible every session. It's been 10 I... years. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Docs, if it makes you feel any better, he's shorter than you in real life. Uh, what were no you saying way. there? With with five stunt points, I want to use uh, Tower of Will here just for plus one to any opposed checks that happen during the role playing that we do here. Ah, oh, I uh, like just that. In, throw just throw in more case. or less the rest of this day. Really, the scene yeah. will kind of be the rest of this day. Really, so yeah, I like it. Plus one to the opposed checks. I love it. That's five points, isn't it? Uh, it's four. So I do have one more. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, the, the other one is Bone Mo, and I just don't have a witty remark right now at the end of that. So, uh, but well, you know what? Actually, yeah, I, I kind of do. Um, ah, so the most dangerous, those who believe they can keep peace. Oh, that is good. Actually, that yeah. was really good. Um, and both of you guys, just so you know, with your result there, I believe you both, yep, you both figured out what they are. Uh, it's different DCs for the two of you. Docs, you just hit yours. Um, you know uh, what the peacekeepers are. I don't need to describe it to you. Obviously, you don't know to the degree of Josh's backstory. Right. But you do know that peacekeepers are literally, their job is to go in and make sure that people are following the law of the Arcane Congress be for the safety of of, uh, of uh, Aurora. Okay? So that comes in many different forms, and you are aware of several of them. Um. She would, as soon as she saw the um, tattoo, she would go, spicy. Oscar actually would likely uh, sit in the carriage, but he would, he has a spear on his back. So he actually probably has to take that off and lay it on his lap. There would be straps and stuff on the roof. He would not be taking it in a, leaving it out of sight around Laszlo for the moment. Fair enough. Yeah. This is a keep it on hand, but it's not in a menacing position or anything. It's just literally tucked down. So he would kind of position himself so that his spear wasn't going to get in the way of anybody. And you guys know that the spear is a mark of station, much like a, a pauldron or a boot or a crest might be, as well as, of course, being a weapon. My diamond. Exactly. It's yeah. it's one of those important things because a Venator is the spear um, to the heart of the uh, of the mage, they're supposed to have it. Not literally at all points in time. He doesn't shower with it, or, but it's one yeah. of those things where um, where having That's it good. readily available shows his station as much as makes him a, uh, you know, valuable in combat. Go ahead. So I'll show them the tattoo and I'll say, um, I've made mistakes in my past, and I'll look back at Oscar and I'll I'll, I'll smile and go, yeah. Trying to keep pieces stupid. Well, for what it's worth, at least you realized it. Yeah, maybe too late. And he would just gesture to his temple, <laughs> and then uh, and look down, and he'll be like, "So, <clears throat> um, that's my story." Um care to share if we're going to be working together. Oscar would turn his head to the muse at this point. After you. I am a diamond muse for the jewels of Era. Uh, she would search your face for any knowledge of, of the jewels. I mean, I don't even know if I would know that. I wouldn't have frequented that, that part of the country. Him personally? Yeah. Mm hmm They certainly... <laughs> so he's heard of it. I'm, I'm a lore guy. I have yeah. a lore. <laughs> that makes sense. If he has heard of it, doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um.
Don't mean to cut you off. Jack can't hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. So the short version is um, uh, Eustace is is not a place where that is a commonplace law. Sorry about that. Um, I was just I may click something. Uh, Eustace is that's not a commonplace law there. Um, so he um, they um, wouldn't he 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 uh, he knows that some sometimes uh, higher born uh, bastard children we go into it, but that's not yeah. it's not super common. In of course you know what they are, just not every detail about it. Of course, yeah. So I'll just, if she, if she pauses, uh, I'll just say, um, I've never, never was able to afford such fine jewelry. Uh, that, she would love that. It's a good line. It's a very good line. Um, and she would say, Laszlo, I'm charmed. He would look down. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you accompany a diamond. It's a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, and I think she would actually even probably uh, pull out a bottle of wine uh, from like one of the various compartments. Like her luggage might still even be in the cart. No, th like... th this is this is your house, even though this isn't your. Oh, your we're not in the carriage anymore. Oh, I'm in the carriage. So this is your house. You would have your wine here. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. To be appropriate glassware, all that. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I understand. Shall all right. I, I thought you were indulge? saying that I had a house elsewhere that I was set up in. So fancy. Well, I mean, you can you can go into. Your... <laughs> I would I would break out wine and I would have several goblets and uh, I would offer each of you a goblet and uh, pour myself. A bottle of, or not a bottle. <laughs> a Pour goblet yourself of wine. a bottle of wine. Um, What's after, up? after I had poured for either that had accepted. Uh, yeah, Oscar, accept. Oscar wouldn't accept at this point in time. He's still nervous. Serious business. More nerves. Stomach's not. Nothing close. to help. No. Like some grape juice. None for me. Thank you, though, for the offer. And she would just nod and look to Laszlo. Oh, he would take it. <laughs> I would, <laughs> take I would it right away. <laughs> I would definitely pour you some. And uh, and you would note that she does it with a little bit of a ritualistic kind of vibe to it. Like um, she would she would trim open the foil with her nail. Uh, she would have just like on her brooch would be a wine cork. Um, that kind of falls out of it and she would very lovingly release the cork without a pop so as to not bruise the wine and uh, and she would take it into her arm like a baby and then pour it and twist as she lifted and like you would just notice there's a lot of grace as <laughs> as she poured this wine for you there was love going into the glass the only adjustment i would make is not the a wine cork fell out of or whatever was in the the brooch was actually so eloquently designed that you didn't realize that its design made it a wine cork and it was one of those like oh that makes sense but it know? folds out it folds out of it like on a hinge like there's a cork that's hidden behind the brooch and like it would lay flat so as to not like snag or be uncomfortable for her to wear. Punch somebody in the head with it. Um, <laughs> and I grab it like a he like a like a ruffian. <laughs> so, and, oh, and, and then I would hold my goblet out to cheers you, and say there is water. To oh, I would absolutely partake in some water. That would be lovely. Thank you. And pour him water. So which way to your house then? Oh, are we not? Are you not changing first? Not in front of you. Well, no, certainly. You'll have not. to pay for that. <laughs> uh, and he'll just kind of scratch his chin at that and kind of be a little bit like he doesn't look flustered. He just looks more confused than anything. Because uh, he doesn't. He, I don't think he's picked up that this is your house yet. He's like this is this is a carriage, so he's assuming that it's a carriage at this point, uh, and he's just okay. Um, so we're gonna take the main road down and 
take a right and then a left at the next, uh, and it'll be the third apartment set on the right. And uh, Chris Allen would, and the carriage would go that way. <laughs> okay. And so you guys are able to make your way um, there. Um, uh, Doxy, correct me if I'm wrong, weren't you getting changed first or were you getting changed in the carriage? So sorry. So uh, she just took this opportunity to not walk at all. We're <laughs> carriaging to his apartment. Okay, that's uh, fine. And then they'll get out and she'll change. Uh, welcome, readers, um, to the first session of our new campaign. Um, quick little information for those of you popping in for the raid. Um, this is the third campaign in the same world, same timeline that interact with one another. Uh, other two are right there in chat. I just popped them in. So feel free to hit those commands if you want to learn more about them. But continue on. <clears throat> so you took the opportunity to get there. You go to the apartment. The apartment, I feel like you're in the, uh, a low-end district by any stretch of the imagination there, Oscar. You were in a, a, uh, a moderate district where it's predominantly uh, residential. And these homes are... are um, are fine, you know, two to three family homes, as you can imagine, in a main city. There's very few one family homes in a place like this, unless they happen to be very, very wealthy. You yourself happen to be in an apartment, as I said beforehand, and what would be a modern day, like a duplex, you know what I mean? Like like a, a side-by-side -side duplex. So you actually are going to go up and when the uh, carriage like, rolls out, there's a small patch of, um, uh, again, in the past days, maybe it would have looked a little bit nicer, but almost like a crabgrass that exists out there. It's late spring, so everything's in full bloom and whatnot. But like a crabgrass right there, and uh, it's one of those things, again, it's got like a modern-day duplex. You would almost walk up side by side with no division or like that, just different steps between your door and your neighbor's door as you guys share that wall down the middle, right? Uh, and you can walk up to your door, use your keys, open the place, and uh, welcome yourself in. Um, the whole place is two stories tall, not particularly large, but definitely larger than you require by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I require a bed. Uh, but at this point, as as he opens the door, he would actually, again, motion for the two of you to go in first. He's not particularly, like, overly cordial about it, but it is very clear that he at least has some level of manners to him. Um, so he would invite you both in in that manner. When Chris Allen comes out of the carriage, she's now wearing a riding trouser and a like flowy blouse and her hair is pulled back and mm -hmm. she's looking much more casual. Um, it does not mean that her mannerisms are any more cordial or cordial. So are any less cordial. So <laughs> as as she enters your home, she'll, she'll curtsy you uh, and step inside arms behind her back. Um, feel free to have uh, liberty to describe this place. Again, you obviously know it's yeah. military uh, issued and that it's basic, but go ahead. Well, it is It is just that. It is very basic. There's almost a, a really simple tile floor to the main room here, and it is just one main room. It's nothing fancy. There's a small, what could be described partially as a, like a little kitchenette type thing happening, but it's what it is, is it's a stove slash fireplace. Like it's it's a combination of the two and there's seating around it and it, there's very clearly like an opportunity to cook there with a pot it's a single pot and that's it um and then there's some stairs up that appear to go towards um just a like living space that's probably a bed area but you won't really see that at this point you'll just see the general seating a pot and a stove and that's it it's it's pretty barren at this point nice um mm -hmm. so you guys can walking in and i imagine to whatever degree make yourselves uh comfortable um, do you guys continue with a bit of small talk and whatnot, or do you turn immediately to pulling out the mirror? Uh, actually, Chrysalyn would, uh, she would look to Oscar and she would say, And you? What about me? Well, Career we have a military. peacekeeper, a diamond, and... Hmm. Neither of you are unfamiliar with the Venator, you've made that clear already. I've made my career in it. The spear at the mage's heart, as they say, but... Uh, she would look uh, kind of excitedly to Laszlo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just to, to gauge his reaction, like, this is spicy. Oh, I mean, it, Laszlo would just be blank-faced. He's been around so many at this point. 
that he's just used to being under the like the Duma Damocles kind of thing. He's just used to it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was would though, Scott, while he's talking, it, can I think of where a sensory device might be placed in this in here? Oh, being of the Arcane Congress, that is actually some of you guys' fortes, you know? Uh, you were no diviner, but certainly you were an enchanter and could make those kind of devices. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have the ability to detect magical auras around you? Um, I, it doesn't work like that I understand. in this one. Yep. Uh, I do have you're identify. Using a, you're using a Maltese magic as opposed to... Um, um, yeah. You know. um, and for viewers that might not be familiar, the three different campaigns use three different gaming systems. Uh, even though they interweave with one another. Um, uh, so different types of magic and whatnot. So that's perfectly fine because one of the things that you do know is if you're looking for non Maltese um, sensors, if you just listen and focus just well enough, you just might be able to hear that almost like feedback noise, that hum, that a keen enough person can notice if you're being sensed by, I mean, a decade ago, but that's not that long for a gnome, that you noticed one of the, uh, those following you before, before you crossed the boundary into a Malta. So it's unlikely, but roll me an intelligence check. Okay. So um, I would let Oscar finish, and then um, I would interrupt him. And like at the end, I would say, do you mind if you just give me a moment of silence? And he would close his eyes and listen, try to hear out after Oscar finishes, of course. I totally Oscar hear actually... Closer. Oscar would be paused at that point because he clearly sees Chris Allen looking at you. So he's he's more of the type to look at what who the person he's talking to is looking at. Like he'll actually stop and, and pay attention to that. Okay. That's really good. That's a really, really high roll. Um, so you listen very keenly for a while. 10 seconds, 12 seconds. You don't hear that feedback. You don't okay. sense that presence. The hairs aren't on end. You're almost positive if there was a, a congressional um, sensor here that you would have noticed it. There isn't one. Okay, so I'll look up and I'll say, um, um, my, my lady, um, Chris Allen, there's no sensors here. It doesn't seem like anyone's listening. Perfect. Satisfied? It was never my concern. Not yours. Is and he turn his head to you, Lazlo, in this moment. Um, Are you satisfied? Um, oh yes. Um, if they were listening in on you, we were in bigger trouble. They that's pretty far into uh, the territory. If they were listening in on me they would be listening in on a soldier who spent the last four years up in the north doing what amounts to a vacation for some soldiers. A reward for my hard work. <laughs> giving me an option of complacency. Mm. Hmm. But a death sentence to a keen mind. If you let it. Yes. So the mirror. Um, <clears throat> um, Oscar will pull it out from behind him, where he had tucked it away under his uh, under his cape, and he'll hand it to you, uh, Chriselle, and back because you gave it to him. Uh, and oh no, I insist. Military to military. As a reminder, the mirror is not a full uh, uh, will crafted piece of glass right mm -hmm. it is a shard of a larger mirror that was broken yep. and then bezel set into uh, a metal casing around it obviously the immediate front part is open it's a mirror it's how you look at it but the handle and uh, the rest of the casing around it was all formed specifically as one piece for this piece of shard yeah. uh to, to sit into you hold the mirror before you and same as i described to doxy beforehand you see kind of in the distance a form like a silhouette it's the full form not just a silhouette um you can actually see like more detail there but there's far enough off that you can't really make up too much detail and it almost looks like it's it's faded in some areas kind of like how my uh, i happen to wear an off green shirt um is mm -hmm. slightly in and out um so uh, a little translucent. Like yeah a little translucent here and there yeah uh, 
Oscar would hold the mirror before him and he would just say, Savant Heathguard, Master Oscar McLaughlin, Venatar, reporting for duty. Uh, when you say that, uh, you kind of catch the form's attention. You see that as the form turns, um, like it's like listening off in the distance and turns you know, to, to bring its attention to it, it doesn't walk towards the, the surface. It almost like slides towards the surface, like almost like, like beforehand it wasn't really focused on them, but now it's like the sensor, if there was a divining sensor there, Josh, um, uh, moves in towards uh, them. Like it looks like they're coming towards you, but then you realize it's actually your perspective moving in. Um, and then there you see before you, I mean, you have seen this man before in posters and in, um, uh, you've definitely read things that he said or heard commands that he's given across the military and whatnot, Oscar. He is no surprise. You've seen him in the halls many times yourself, um, uh, Laszlo. You've had conversations with him. He's one of the most, um, uh, uh, early on, one of the most disproving of the decision to keep you there because he also served at the side of the of the king prior to the, uh, his passing and the queen taking over. Um, one of the most disproving. But sometime over the course of seven, eight, maybe eight years, he eventually softens and you grew a... Uh, your acquaintances. You wouldn't say friends by any stretch of the imagination, but you're friendly enough. You know what I mean? So you're familiar with him. And uh, Chris Ellen, spoiler already dropped, but um, you see a face that you've never seen before beyond, of course, the depictions in, again, maybe Starkle painting sketches and trouble. paintings. Yeah. yeah. But uh, those always show, like, you know, the best side and they don't show the imperfections that somebody really is. Some people are ashamed of things like, say, a mole that might they might have on their cheek. And so depictions of them don't present that. Um, they smooth out the lines around the eyes to portray more youth or add them to portray wisdom, whatever the case may be, right? Um, never before have you seen such an accurate depiction. What Does he say? look like me? Um, I mean, I would say not really. Would He's... they see any resemblance? Um, not unless somebody's intentional looking for it. You know what I mean? It's one of those things okay. like where it's like cross gender and cross like to, to, um, uh, style, like you are done up. Right. And he's a warrior. It's, it's listen. Oh, oh my God. You guys do look alike. Like it would have to be brought right, up right, first, right, right. right? Um, so anyways, when you're looking at him, seeing him for the first time, this is only a few months old, wherever he is or however he's doing, you don't know, but you're looking at him and you can recognize him. He definitely would not recognize you. There's no way that he would know what you look like. However, um, there uh, there he is, as you say your words to him, stating your name and rank and um, station and whatnot. And um, uh, he looks back to you and says, um, Oscar, I've, uh, I've actually heard of you before. I remember the deeds that you have done. And he looks to those uh, around and says, uh, to the two that are, that are outside the mirror near you, because you can imagine he's almost looking at you guys, like he's looking mm -hmm. at you through a, a mirror, or maybe a shard of mirror. You don't know. You've never been on the other side, and technically never can be. So you, I guess you never could know uh, what it's like for their perspective. But once he sees them, he says, in your past. Kind of cuts himself off from any further details. Um, he says, uh, the three of you, are you the ones that the queen has said that I'm uh, to work with? Yes, sir. A muse, a soldier, and a gnome. Laszlo? Sir? <laughs> Have you had an opportunity to acquaint yourselves with one another? Oscar just kind of nods slightly. He, he definitely is giving an indication of enough. But... Did the queen misspeak? Or I should say... Did she let information slip of the first task? She told us that we were going south. Nothing more. You can see a pained look in his eyes as he Oscar locks nods. his jaw. <laughs> Oscar nods at that. He knows that was too much information in open court as well, but he wasn't going to say that to the queen. <laughs> and so he says, um, <clears throat> south indeed is where I intend for you to head. There are tasks that need to be done down there. There was word, and he looks to Laszlo and says, you've investigated the area before we spoke? Kind of cutting himself off before he continued. Yes, of course, there's no sensors. Nods again. There is word 
that the Arcane Congress has come to the Paradell and has offered them greater aid than they had in the past. Beforehand, what they offered were wands. Now it's believed they're offering mages, full-blown and trained wizards, to work in disguise or out in the open, that part we don't know yet, to aid the Paradell military along that border. It is believed that Yovance will not survive this year's end unless there is some degree of interference done, and done quickly. We need that interference to take place. This is why, of course, Oscar, you were appointed to this task. You need to sniff out who these mages are, using Laszlo's uh, understanding of the Congress, and end them. Whatever means necessary. However, we cannot stop with this. Our relationship with Yovance is strained at best, as you might imagine. Their practices, their morality, does not fall entirely in line with that of a Malta. As a matter of fact, it has caused disquiet along the southern border. There are some people along the south, some degree of chatter. These could be rumors, but nonetheless need to be investigated, that people think we might be on the wrong side of that war. Some people believe, despite Paradell being our enemy to the east, allowing them to overtake Yovance wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. We, of course, understand the significance of that. This is where the next step comes in play. After you successfully identify and eliminate those mages, that will certainly put the three of you in the good graces of the leadership of Yovance. I have specific names for you, of course, for you to interact with, and if you need to know them now, I'll gladly give them to you. But when you're in their good graces, they will bend ear, perhaps even back, to aid you however you can convince them to do so. We need them to, to some degree or another, stop their actions. The degree to which they maintain slaves and treat them is disgusting. It needs to be reformed. Now this next information goes above all of your ranks, all of your positions. So understand, the only reason why you're hearing this is because the queen directly instructed me to give it to you in her wisdom. Long live the queen. She... Live the queen. She wanted me to inform you that Yovance is actually having an uprising. They're having a revolt. Not an individual revolt, several small ones, but they're joining together. They're making a massive revolt that actually could overthrow the current government. You think that this new government is going to want to work hand-in-hand hand with a Malta? Those that backed their master's whips for how many years? How many generations? especially given the war's time? Of course they won't. We need there to be a degree of reform that keeps their own problems at bay enough that they don't come to bother Malta's southern border. This is your task. He says, looking to, um, uh, to Chris Allen. I need only the names. Of course. Um, and so he actually pulls out from inside of his, um, uh, inside of his, like, his coat there. He actually pulls out a small, like, leather bound, uh, like, a notepad with kind of, like, a leather strap over it. And he opens it up and, like, uh, any boomer, take uh, licks his finger and okay. starts, you know, uh, flipping pages. Um, and you don't have to worry about taking notes because I'm actually going to copy and paste some names for you into your, uh, group pool from my gym. Yay, thank you. You're welcome for my Saving gym. Saving us time. No, Saving us time. <laughs> Uh, and you can take notes of the details of them if you'd like. Yes. I, um, yeah, I'll, I'll copy and paste the names before you yep. talk then, please. Thank exactly you. what I just did. Got them. Okay. So question, Scott, it. about Shoot. my Arcana roll earlier and the use of this item, how it diminishes in time. Yep. Is it per use or amount of time used? Honestly, it, you don't fully understand the magic is that aren't fully understand. What you do know is that using the magic tends to increase the warmth of it by a small degree. That small degree allows the Quicksilver to um, liquefy and evaporate um, uh, quickly. Now you believe it's amount of time over period of time, but every individual use, the longer amount of time, kind of like if you use your computer for like quick stints versus for a long period of time, it gets hotter and hotter, and then you allow it to cool down, right? Like a processor mm -hmm. or whatever, kind of like that, right? So each individual use that also happens to be longer is going to do more damage. Okay. So, 
Um, and to answer your question, if I utilize ice magics to try to reduce the temperature of this thing, will that aid? That's actually a really good theory, and there's a, a few different tomes that um, lead into that theory and how it's beneficial, and an equal number of tomes dis disregarding that theory. There is no consensus one way or the other. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have that anyway. So I, no, I, of course, but the, <laughs> but but uh, to those that that push towards that theory, they also say uh, placing the mirror underneath an ice bath. Um, uh, of water, you know what I mean, uh, could potentially lend aid at the same time. And others say, then you listen to a garbledy gloop kind of message coming through from the other side of the mirror and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. So, um, moving on. Uh, you go to take notes. Uh, the names that he says to you are um, the names of notes of who it is that you're going to interact with. First and foremost, there is a, a, a draw, uh, sorry, a draw rem, uh, remnani, remnami, um, uh, she happens to be the commander in charge of the military down where they are facing, uh, down on the front lines facing against the Paradel. She is the one that you're going to have to coordinate with uh, to find these mages and to eliminate them, whether they be done individually by expertise, whatever expertise you might have, or with the backing of her army. That is who you need to speak there. She is overseen by Mervs, um, by um, his noble honor, Mervs, uh, Vabudath. Um, Mervs is the one that you will have as a, a bit of an in to the uh, leadership of Yovance once you actually have uh, uh, succeeded in your task. Good luck with Mervs. He's an ass. I haven't needed an in in 18 years. Um, uh, he nods. Um, uh, appreciation of your uh, confidence, as you imagine a a soldier does and then uh, just pushes on and says as for the uprising uh, the individual uprising that seems to be joining with the others looking to uh, pool their resources together rather than battle with one another over the uh, nuanced differences of how they think new leadership should follow out that is Damon Z Damon Saquis uh, generally speaking a slave does not have a surname however this particular slave was um, well, they served in the Yovance military, they lost several battles, um, were stripped of rank, um, caused a bit of a commotion, and then were thrown into indentured servitude that inevitably led to slavery because of whatever reasons that I do not have at my disposal, and it's needless to say, being on the other side of what it was that they led, decided that perhaps the way that they've always lived their life was not the best way to do so. And slaves, foolish and uneducated as they are, easily fell to his sway, and he is leading this revolt. Knowing the ins and outs of the structure of leadership and military of Yovance. Damon is not to be underestimated, if you ever do encounter them. Hopefully you don't need to. You have my gratitude, Savant. Uh, yeah, Savant. Or, or, um, they're noble as well. But yeah, yeah Savant works. Yep, either rank. rank. Rank or stature work. Yep. Um, so, um, so, uh, he again nods to you. He never asked for your name because he never needed to. Um, so, uh, he nods and says, is there any other questions or any other details that you feel you need fit? Oscar looks to Chriselle and first for confirmation if she's all right with everything. This is all I need. All other information would be helpful, but if I am to heed the advice of the queen, we should cease contact as soon as possible. And you, Laszlo? Savant. What schools would be the most prominent to hide in the armies? He thinks for a moment, then shakes his head and says, Honestly, I, I do not know. That is going to have to fall into your expertise based off the situation. I don't know how what month it is um, right now, and where you are. But what I do know is that um, uh, battlefields change day by day, and so the needs can vary. Um, as, as seen fit. Um, perhaps listening to the muse is not a bad idea. We can end discussions now, and when you're along the southern border, you can contact me then, see if there's any more information you can gather. There's one more detail I do wish to say. 
And this is advice of the queen. As you travel south or southeast, depending on where the battle might be taking place as you uh, make your way, don't just march forthright and with great speed. Stop. Take it in. How many of you have been to the southern borders of Malta? How many of you have enjoyed its beauty? How many of you have interacted with its people? Learn them. Learn who you serve. And serve them well. Yes, Savant. Thank you. Kind heart in our queen. Um, he will just kind of like uh, stand there and as you guys like move the mirror away, it's kind of like you can see he's just kind of like almost like turns and he kind of like looks confused for a moment as like the thing pulls away from him. Mm-hmm. He seems a little disoriented. And then if you do choose to look at it a minute or so later, you'd see he's back to exactly how he was before. Laszlo, does this thing give off a magical aura of any kind? Uh, Scott, I'm going to touch it. And I'll expend one MP mm-hmm. using my arcane scholars uh, ability. Can you bloop so that in you... chat the way 5e and whatnot can or no? No, but I can copy and paste it if you want. We get a, um, is there a way for us to make like a button to bloop that, Josh? Uh, I can create a macro that I press and it'll just Okay, do cool. That. Yeah, yeah. Basic macro. And then we can have everybody with anybody's spells that they might have can have one set up for themselves. Uh, cool. Thank you, sir. Um, so anyways, my apologies. Um, journeyman, enchanted items cannot be hidden from uh, from you by touching an object and spending one MP, which is mana points or magic points, whatever you want to call it. You can determine whether it is uh, a magic item. Um, this doesn't tell you what the item does, uh, only that it's enchanted in some way. So yep. when you hold that and you spend that MP, you learn it is absolutely enchanted. No questions. Now, can't you yep. also make a check or something to learn more? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want i can roll um i can roll, uh, well no well i can do identify mm-hmm. if you want me to do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but identify doesn't do detect magic it just tells me about the magics yep, yep, yep. on the item yep. i can also do if you want i can do uh, an intelligence uh, enchantment arcana roll nope. i actually want you to do exactly that if you could um and so the way that magic works in, in um, the Arcane Congress, the standard, the rigid way that it's done, that's trained throughout most of uh, the, the nation of Eroth, right? So the continent of Eroth, uh, by, of course, decree of the Arcane Congress uh, across all nations, right? Is It's very rigid, very fine line. A spell has a school to it. It can be uh, looked at by the color of its aura. Perhaps maybe it gives off other uh, signifying things and sounds or smells for a more keen person. They can kind of pick up these details to tell you this is an enchantment spell. This is an arc. Uh, I'm sorry, a necromancy spell. This is no problems. However, Malta doesn't work with such rigid lines. They are a nation made out of sorcerous bloodlines that kind of have magic flow through them naturally. Sure, some people do learn it in a more rigid format through book learning and so on and so forth, just because they didn't necessarily have it innate to them. But they still learn that kind of amorphous, manipulate magical essence at its basics, um, uh, as opposed to you know, right, this box I keep saying. So, so when you are are kind of like detecting magics here, it's less about like what color it's giving off, and more about again those sounds, those smells, those tastes, and everything that come off here. Less so the smell, but it definitely does exist there too. Uh, with a fourteen total, you can see that this thing is a uh, technically has um uh what's it called um um if I'm trying to think of how to describe this to you in this game's formats. I can tell you an Arcane Congress format easily. Um, You know that this has a type of magic that takes an imprint of the person's essence of who they are. Maybe even an imprint of their soul for who they were uh, at the time of this happening. And then it puts, um, it it traps a bit of that in here, um, giving off almost a bit of a necromatic aura, like that kind of that color. But you're definitely seeing and smelling um, uh, the essence of illusion in here too. You feel that all wrapped within um, a degree of like a bit of a transmutation that kind of like, again, holds it together for you nice and firm. Um, Yeah, it definitely has a magical aura, sir. Yeah. Um, Would I be able to... uh, 
I don't know. I was going to say, would I be able to guess how strong it is? Like how like hard it would be for someone else to sense it? If it was, because right now it's out in the open, right? And I'm looking right at it and I know what to look for. Uh, I know I'm looking at it. What about someone that just is searching? And doesn't know that we have it. The aura right now is a little bit strong off of it, but it's pulsing and dissipating as we uh, a, a, mm-hmm. as time passes. You imagine if it's been inert for a long while, maybe a day or, or more, then mm-hmm. it, you would have to be in pretty close proximity to notice something like this if you were specifically looking for this kind of a thing, right? You'd be in kind of a close proximity um, or touching it. Um, but if you're actively using it, oh, it's definitely going to be giving off a much brighter aura okay. um, and definitely for some time afterwards. All right. So um, for a second, you see him sniff the air, close his eyes and reopen. Well, you wouldn't be able to see him close his eyes, but you see him just kind of uh, focus on on the eye object and sniff almost like he's trying to hear something. Uh, and then uh, he'll say, uh, yeah, it most definitely gives off an aura. Um, so if we don't use it, the aura should dissipate. Uh, and it would be extremely hard to find. Now, how long? Um, I, how probably long a day in between. Uses. All right. Good to know. Um, something I should have informed you guys before we activate it, but you know everything happened really quite fast. Um, uh, the more uses, the more times we use this, and the longer we use it, the more it's going to wear out, and it will eventually dissipate completely. Queen told us that, didn't she? No, you knew that. Um, you made knowledge checks originally to learn that. Okay. So, so did Oscar not did not that. know that. So this is news to Oscar. Yeah. Well, that explains why you were both eager to get off the call, as it were. Hey, someone said Skype. It's stuck in there now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. Uh, so I... I it just might be smart that if we're going to activate it, we should be prepared a list of questions and try to not, well, you know. Yes, not have... waste our time. Exactly. Yeah. I, I've used these in lessons. Hmm. How long do they normally last, Scott? That's actually a really good question. You have no idea. Is it based on size or? So many details <laughs> that you honestly have no clue. Like I said, if it was a full made one, there none has ever run out before. It's indefinite, right? Because you don't know what the defined timeline is. For these individual ones, nobody knows. Unfortunately, the, this kind of magic is still a bit too... Um, uh, it's like they learned how to make it, but not necessarily all the details around it, right? All right. So, yeah. It's like, and you can imagine as you as a as a user, if you if I said Doxy, pick up your cell phone and show me all the stuff you can do with it, you certainly know how, but you have no idea how to create that, right? right. Yeah, I do. So, okay. Yeah, I do. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, little one? Do you give off a magical aura? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Good to know. I'll, I'll hold my hands up, and um, I don't know if you guys. Happy birthday, this Joey! Woo woo! Happy birthday, buddy. Happy oh, birthday. Oh. 22 hey. years old. Um, the is the queen now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's her birthday now, too. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you would notice this before, because he mm. like wouldn't have been like touching you guys or anything like that. Um, but his hands are scarred. And yeah, I, don't, freshly... I don't know if you saw my session zero, but that's the first thing I look for on magic users. Oh, OK. Right. Then you would have noticed it. <laughs> Um, they're, they're freshly scarred and yeah. with what looks to be lightning damage, electrical, um, stuff running up to it. You would likely notice now that you're doing that on Oscar, lightning scars going down his neck underneath his armor. Yeah. Uh, now that you're looking at sharing scars here. The only thing <laughs> that you notice about Chris Ellen is that she coined. Fair. Pristine cleavage. skin. We noticed the cleavage. All right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, <laughs> perks to the height. Um, can you mask that in any way? I, I, if you cannot, I, I can. I, I I could wear gloves, um, but my aura... Not, I, not, the, not the hands, the aura. No. I've I can serve as means of distraction, at the very least. I think in combination that will work quite well, but I have a choice to make. I either, when we leave... 
block out the magical aura of this fine object that we have, which will dissipate over time, or I block out yours, making you less suspicious to those around us, making you easier to integrate into our society. Find it's better that we're traveling with a magical companion than a magical item. I think for the first day you might be right. We wouldn't want anyone to know that that is anything other than an ordinary mirror should it be found upon us. My concern is the general public having a distaste for the Congress. Um, I guess I should tell you because it might come up uh, and you see him, he's actually like really nervous and scared and he starts shaking and he puts his hands up to his goggles and he'll pull them off and you guys will see just jet black eyes. Okay, well then. Um, you, Oscar, you don't need to roll anything again because of your background. Doxy, you do because you've definitely never met one before. Um, uh, could you roll me um, a, a history check? If not, then just intelligence. That is real good. Why does she roll so sexy? God, <laughs> Doxy, you are a goddess. Flirt. No. So, <laughs> and uh, flirt. <laughs> under, the, under the exploration uh, area, is there any stunt point you care to do or no? Under oh, exploration. God. Yeah. If not, that um, could be fine. 18's. I really want one where I can calm someone. But uh, I don't think that I really need to. I think that she would look down at him and she would say, well, that's remarkable. You're very remarkable, Laszlo. <clears throat> um, so just so you guys know, both of you completely understand, there is only one race that has these kind of eyes, and it is the, um, the offshoot race. Both of you guys know of the, not the whole history, but you know that they're clearly an offshoot race of gnomes, how they came to be. Uh, uh, I imagine you do not know, Oscar. But, Doxy, you don't know, but you've definitely heard a rumor. And I know that the Sill exists. You, you both know the Sill exists, right? But you've heard a rumor that potentially the Sill were a mistake made by the uh, by the Arcane Congress. But you don't know that. Again, that's, that's just chatter in the courts, right? Um, you certainly have never met one, though. Perhaps the reason for your broken fealty. Yeah, he'll put him back on. Around. Hmm? Punishment, is it? In 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 a sense, um, he'll put his goggles back on. Um, I should probably not be seen. I stand out. Standing out is fine, but standing out with a magical presence makes you a threat. We mask the little one. The mirror will dissipate with time, and in this capital, who is to question a muse and a master Venatar walking through the city with a magical item? Now a magical gnome, people might start to wonder. If you think it's best. I disagree, but if that's what will make the two of you more comfortable, just guard that mirror with everything that you have. Um, just so you know, like I said, right now it's giving off a goop because you just used it, right? When the aura is light enough because of the close proximity, if you were to wrap it inside something, and I don't mean going so far as like a lead cloth, if you were to wrap it inside something like maybe a, a bit of, like, it's a mirror and you don't want to break it, instead of some sort of like protective um, uh, leather or something like that, and then put that inside of a backpack, that would make it even more difficult for somebody to find. Um, as soon as we get out of the capital, I am taking off my cloak. I am taking off my pauldrons. I will be a normal soldier Ooh. because we cannot draw that much attention. Hey. -o. So, Not my forte, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, leave that to me then. But I will wrap it in my cloak. It will be hidden. So what am I? Um, if I'm not, um, um, uh, what, am I just your, an aide? Uh, a, a servant? Um, she will, she will actually kind of take a little bit of offense to that. Um, 
on behalf of him from his yeah. own words. And she'll she'll drop to his height and look him straight in the eyes, pull his goggles down, and say, you are a companion. And a citizen of Amalta. The queen said this was your home. That makes it law. Will do you well to uh, have the confidence to remember that and to carry it with you. All right. She'll get back to her seat. He'll put the goggles on immediately. <laughs> like, he does not, not like them all. Not just like. Uh, um, and he'll just be like, uh, I, I, I meant more as a cover. Um, but thank you. Those are very kind. No words. cover. You are a companion. If you're not magical, you're a refugee. So serious, gentlemen. <laughs> it's the way of things. There are you know no the needs for guises. We are within a Malta currently. We will be within a Malta for at least several days. Yes. Okay. We will. We have time to refine plans on the way. I would just like to experience it without so many eyes on me. <laughs> eyes. Again, not my forte. Yes. Well, if the eyes are on you, then they're not on me, are they? She'll, uh, she'll chuckle. And with that, and the understanding that they're going to be leaving, probably, I mean, it's early in the day still, right? But they probably want to get the rest of their stuff together. They might be leaving later today, maybe the next morning. But we can discover that when we come back. We're going to take another quick break, um, uh, and we will we'll, we'll come right back and, and finish up this um, this session. So see you all in about five minutes. Bye bye. Bye.